Hello everyone, my guest today is Brad Birnbaum. He has been building customer support companies for more than 20 years. Previously, he was the co-founder of Assistly, which was acquired by Salesforce and became Desk.com. Before that, he was CTO for Talisma and co-founder and CTO of eShare Technologies. Based in New York, now building Customer.com with a K. Brad, are you ready to take us to the top? Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So Thank you're, you. yeah, I'm glad you're here. You're addicted to the space, huh? Yeah, just, uh, you know, ended up there. By accident, uh, 95, and um, just keep coming back for more. Really, really, really have grown to love helping customers. All right, so tell us about customer.com. Again, it's customer with a K. What do you guys do, and what's the revenue model? Is it a pure play SaaS company? Yeah, it's a, it's a, SaaS, it's a SaaS business. Um, so um, customer with a K, we are all about um, build, building a platform to understand everything about your customers and supporting them on top of that platform. So more specifically, um, when customers go to a company to seek support, most of the time companies are using a standard ticketing system. And, and those ticketing systems know very little about the customer, right? They, uh, a customer may email, it, may, may email in, hey, I have a problem with this pair of pants I ordered, if it's, let's say, an, an e-commerce company. Um, but more often than not, the company can't relate it to an order. They don't know anything about that customer. They don't know that their most recent order was... Uh, invoice number one, two, three, four, you know, SKU five, six, seven, eight, size, you know, X. They don't know anything about it. And then they can't actually action it inside of the support system, inside of that support channel. So customer is all about a platform to orchestrate all of that. So we, mm -hmm. we, 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 we know everything about the customer. Um, most of our implementations will have tremendous amount of data coming in from different data sources. Uh, could be from your e-commerce systems, Shopify, Spree, Magento, Wufoo, et cetera. Um, or lots of homegrown systems. We're seeing we're seeing immense amount of integrations with lots of uh, custom proprietary systems, and data comes in. And, and when customers are are seeking service, the support agent knows so much more about the customer. And then more importantly, um, they can action it very 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 quickly, right? So if somebody needs to say, "Hey, I need to uh, return that pair of pants for a larger size." Um, in a lot of traditional models, you're going to three, four, five different systems to, to process that. You're going to a return system. You're going to an inventory system. Often you might have to go to a suggestion engine if, if, if there isn't that, that pair of pants in inventory and then ultimately place the order. You finally go back to the customer and say, all right, we're sorry, you know, we're sorry it didn't fit you, but we just replaced it, um, an order and here's your, your tracking number. Inside a customer, you just push one button, order larger size, and it takes care of all of that magically for you. Your That's business. right. So a lot of API connections, I'm imagining. Yeah. I mean, our, 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 our platform and the business process automations on top of our platform can orchestrate really advanced business operations. And, and so Brad, why not, you know, the Salesforce acquisition, it was reported, it was called 50 up front and maybe some 30 after that with some combination of weird terms. Uh, what, I mean, why not build this inside of Salesforce? You're, you're already there. Oh, um, well, I mean, that, that's a different, that's a different story, but, uh, you know, the sale, my experience at Salesforce was great. I spent three years after being acquired at Salesforce, um, learned a lot. Um, was that because you had to because of the deal terms or because you chose to? Uh, it was a little bit of both, but yeah. uh, no, it was, it, was a, it was a great company to, to learn from and spend some cycles, and I enjoyed my time there. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, moving on, when, 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 when my co-founder and I decided to start Customer, um, you know, we wanted a modern platform. Like the Salesforce platform is 20 years old, right? And if you ever had to use it, it's all built on Apex and Sokol and, and a whole bunch of very proprietary um, solutions that, that um, you know, modern apps don't really use it at, at this point any, anymore. So we knew that the world needed something, something started today, right? You know, I often, I often hold this up and say, this is only 10 years old, right? Um, the iPhone, right? So yeah. Just think about how the world has evolved in the last 20 years and the technologies you would build platforms on today versus 20 years ago and, and the ways that you would make it easier for, for, for people to build amazing apps on top of it. So it's just a different situation. And, and that's, that's, that's why we've done that, right? I, I believe um, wholeheartedly that every decade, uh, technologies and products need to be reinvented. Um, yep. The world moves so rapidly. So, so Brad, give me a little bit more so we can understand about who your ideal and typical customer is. I mean, what's the average customer paying for this set of services per month, would you say? Oh, so we have, we have uh, three pricing tiers, um, starting at, at basically $50, $50 a month. Um, our, enterprise mo our enterprise plan is $100 a month, and then our ultimate plan is uh, $169 a month. And there's, there's different capabilities within, within each tier. Most of our customers tend to be on our enterprise tier. Um, our enterprise tier is, is pretty rich in, in, in what it what it includes. We don't have a bunch of add-ons like some of our competitors might. So everything is, is included. All of our channels that we support are, are included. Um, 
And so, uh, Brad, just to be clear, is it, is it fair to say that the average is probably around that hundred dollar mark? Is that is that fair? Yeah, I, okay. I would say, I mean, we definitely have some customers who've embraced what's in our ultimate plan, whether it be our advanced pulse capabilities or whether it be sandbox capabilities, whether it be unlimited collaborators, if you have a really large organization that you need non, uh, non-agent licenses for. So there's definitely certain advantages to being on the ultimate plan. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I would say you know, more, more of our customers are on the enterprise tier than, than the other two tiers. And, and are there, uh, what specific pricing levers are you using to drive things like expansion or revenue? Salesforce obviously you know, might use contacts. HubSpot is using you know, contacts or API calls or things like that. What things like that are you using to drive expansion? So at the moment, it, it, it's seat-based. So at the moment, as companies grow, um, they're adding more seats. And, and our expansion numbers, while we don't publicly disclose them, are, are quite large. We're seeing just mass expansion happen. We've we partnered with a lot of early amazing companies, and we're watching them grow up. And you know, we're seeing companies that once started with us at 10 seats a year ago are, are up to 100 seats you know, just 12 months later, right? So we're seeing a tremendous amount of, of expansion. Um, we're also, you know, super proud of our zero churn that we have. So a lot of companies in our business. That's net, that's net or gross? Um, it's, it's, uh, it's net. We have, we have like yeah. no, we're basically no churn. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, just, just to be clear though, Brad, there's, I mean, there's a lot of companies in our space that have net negative churn because expansion outpaces a lost revenue. When do you guys think you'll hit net negative? Yeah. Oh, um, we're, 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 if you're talking about it from that perspective, we're, we're way past net negative. Um, you know, so we, um, what does that mean though? Way past net negative. Well, we've got uh, from an expansion, if you think about it, if you're including expansion in there, you know, I was saying zero churn, we've lost no customers, right? Um, if you're talking about churn, including expansion, then we've, our expansion is uh, 40% this quarter, right? Yep. Of, of our well, like just massive expansion, right? So um, if you're including that in the churn number, then, then it's, then it would be negative. I, I it's, it, if I'm understanding you correctly, that's super impressive because you said your, your lowest price point is 50 bucks a month. I have never interviewed a CEO with a meaningful volume of $50 a month paying customers that has never lost any of those logos. I mean, they go out of business. So how have you managed that? To be clear, one, we don't have a tremendous amount of customers on the $50 plan. Okay. Two, um, and more specifically, we do define ACV. Uh, we do define churn very sim- to, in a similar uh, methodology as a lot of our competition does. Um, as measured by any customer um, above 5K in ACV. Oh, got it. So, so yeah. That's, that's this, what we're focusing. We're, we're focusing on mid-market at the moment. So why not just kill the bottom plan? Um, it's there. We, we, do have a, we do have a bunch of customers on it. We have seen customers start on that $50 plan and, 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 and upsell to, to, to the enterprise plans. We are seeing that happen a bunch. Mm-hmm. Um, but almost all, I would say... 80% or greater of our, of our new deals in the last two quarters have been enterprise or ultimate. So we're, not, we're not doing a tremendous amount on, on the pro plan. There's so much more, there's so many more capabilities inside of enterprise that most customers are, are, are opting to take that capability. And it's where yeah. we're focusing. We're, we're not focusing on the, the lower end of SMB at the moment. Yep. So just to summarize all that, to make sure I got it all in a very clean sentence, most people coming in at a hundred bucks a month, that's where you're focused at and above higher than $5,000 ACVs. Not only are they starting at a hundred bucks per month, you're seeing incredible expansion year over year to the tune of about 40%. I think you're, I think I heard you say per quarter on those same customer accounts. And that doesn't even include new brand new customers you're adding. So yeah. So, so that, that's where you get net negative churn. You, you say you're significantly negative at this point, correct? Yeah. Okay. Correct. Give me more. I want to understand, put this on a timeline for a second. So you launched the company, you sold in 2011, I believe to Salesforce. You said you were there for three years. So you launched this in 2014? No. So um, when I left Salesforce, um, it was one of my only uh, opportunities outside of the customer service space. I went to, uh, I was the CTO of Airtime, which is, um, it's Sean Parker's company. It's, yep. all, you know, it was all about building the next great social network. Um, what the, Brad, what the hell happened to the launch was incredible. You're doing the bling and the bling and the bing. What the hell happened? So, um, I wasn't there for that launch. I was, I was after that launch, okay. but, um, it was, um, it just seemed like such a great opportunity, right? I, um, when I was approached for the opportunity, it, it, it was, there's a bunch of great people there, Sean and, and Daniel Klaus who, who, who ran it, just great people, amazing investors and amazing board. It seemed like such a great challenge, not a space I was super familiar with, but one that I figured, well, I would, I'd love to learn from, from Sean and Daniel, love to be a part of that, um, do something different for a little while, see how that works out. Um, I spent a year there. It was a lot of fun. 
Um, we rebuilt the product. We rebuilt the engineering team. We rebuilt the engineering process. We really scaled it up. But in the end, I, I, I realized my heart, my heart isn't in the consumer space, right? I, yeah. I'm, 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 a, I'm a B2B person, right? I, I like to build a product that I know has proper product market fit that I understand and I can see the vision. You can put a price on it and sell it. That's just the world I'm accustomed to. So I decided I, I wanted to get back into a space that I'm, that I'm just used to, that I was a, a, a better fit for. So in, in 2015, um, Jeremy, my co-founder, um, and I decided, uh, he was with me at airtime and we, we left airtime at the same time in uh, August, 2015. Are you was Jeremy also with you? Jeremy Serial? Yeah. So he was also, he also left Salesforce. He was with you at Assistly as well. I've been working with Jeremy since 1996. He's been, <laughs> he's been working together for quite a while, um, through many, many companies. Um, yes, yeah, so we've, 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 uh, you know, I've got a good collection of folks that we've, we've been super, super tight with over the years. It's important. Yeah. And, and, you know, that level of trust and, you know, knowing, knowing, you know, being able to finish each other's senses, is just critical, right? It's, it's great for building a business. So 2015 is officially year one, huh? Yeah. So we, uh, we incorporated in September of 2015, um, is when customer was formed. Um, we, uh, we were initially planning to sell fund, but there was a lot of strong interest from the VC community. And we found some amazing partners with Bold Start, which is... Uh, How much have you raised? To date? Yeah. Oh, uh, 38 and a half million. 38. Okay. Yeah. So you, I mean, you really just went all in on that. Yeah. Well, we did, uh, yes, we've done a, um, we did a, we did a two and a half seed, a, a, a 10 million a, and then, and then we just did, um, we just did 26 on the, um, on the B. That's great. That's great. And walk me through. So again, 2015, uh, launch, uh, great team building out past co-founders, great chemistry, 38 million raised. Uh, where are you at today in terms of total customers? So we don't disclose customer count or revenue at the moment. I'm sorry. Um, okay. Well, give, give me a general, I mean, are we talking like millions of customers, tens of thousands, a thousand, give me a general range that you're comfortable with. Um, we're not in millions. I mean, we're, we're, we're focusing on mid market. So if you're focused on mid market, you're, you know, we've, um, no, we're, we have, um, you know, it's more, it's definitely not thought of in tens of thousands. It's less than that. Okay. Right? I mean, I, I don't want to push you too hard here, but I, I want a big range. So can we say between 1000 and 10,000 is fair customers? Um, yeah, I would say it's about right. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. Okay. Good. You're thinking on. Yeah, it's a little. It's a little less than that. Okay. Fair enough. Good. But, so, but so, our, our customers are of size, right? Like we have customers that are two thousand agents, right? We have, um, we have lots of large customers that are that are plus one hundred seats, right? Yep. Uh, going all the way up to thousands of seats, right? So those are those are borderline enterprise opportunities, right? Like a 2000, a 2000 agent call center, that, that's an enterprise opportunity at that point, right? We do have fortune 50 companies. Right? Yeah. So am I hearing you correctly and saying, I mean, you might have 900 logos on you, but your impact is much greater than that. If it's a thousand seats per that one logo. Sure. So yeah. I mean, some of our, some of our, some of our logos are thousands of seats. Yep. Yeah, that, make, that makes good sense. Um, w walk me through growth rate today. So you said 40% revenue expansion kind of quarterly, but walk me through like a year ago today, are you going 100% year over year, 200% where are you at? Um, I'll tell you, you know, the, um, this much I will, I will share. So, you know, the, the VCs, they have this, this, this rule of thumb that I like to use, right? The triple, triple, double, double. Yep. So we'll be at uh, 6X triple is our first, what our first two years will look like. Right. Hold on, six extra. I'm, can, I don't understand what that means. Well, I mean, traditionally, uh, if you use the triple, triple, double, double rule of thumb, right? It means from year one to year two, you want to triple your, your yep. run rate. From year two to year three, you want to triple your run rate. Um, we'll, uh, from year one to year two, we'll, we'll have six x it. And um, oh, wait, you're past that already, right? So no, no. Let me let's be clear. We only we're only in market for five quarters. Oh, got it. So even though you launched 2015, you're not really counting. No, no, no. We weren't selling it. We we um. We, we were building a platform is a, is a hard thing to do a proper platform. We, um, we only began selling in April of 2017. So almost a, we, we weren't in, we weren't in market for the first year and a half of our existence. Yeah. Uh, that was always the plan. That's that we, we, we set up the company that way we structured it. We capitalized on it. We wanted to build the proper product for scale. Um, and, and more importantly than even that was a proper platform to build our apps and for others to be able to build our apps on top of. So to do that properly was a, was a, was a large effort and one that we planned accordingly. So as a result, um, yeah, we, uh, we had customers starting to get our product in November of 2016. And the plan was always to begin billing on April 1st, 2017. So we are five quarters in right now. Um, so yeah, so we're, we're, um, 
our, our, our growth was so strong. We had to re, 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 re forecast our model in a, in a good way. Yeah, but I just, I just want to call this out though, to be fair, going from a dollar to $6 in revenue is a great growth rate when, when you're starting, but it's difficult, right? What, what you're saying though, is you're generally seeing healthy growth. Look, we can back into some very minimal numbers. If you've got, you said, you said a little, maybe a little less than a thousand, if you're at 900 logos, right. And a hundred bucks is what they're paying on average. You're well North of nine new grand a month per, per, per month in revenue at this point, right? We can kind of back into this stuff and assume, you know, apply the growth rates to that and assume kind of where you might be going. Yeah, what I would just simply say is, is compa- in comparable SaaS companies, um, I would say we're doing very well. Yeah, well, you, 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 have, you have to because you raised 38 million bucks. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, we're, we're being evasive, but, but um, you know, I, we, we don't share our numbers publicly at the moment. But uh, yeah, they're, 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 they're quite strong compared to other companies at our stage in time and market. Um, so we're proud of that, right? We're, we're- yeah. I mean, Brad, just to be fair though, you've raised 38 million bucks. They better be strong. Otherwise there's going to be some changes that no one's going to be liking very much. This is true. Um, yeah. the, 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 the large portion of that raise just occurred um, just a couple of weeks ago. So that, oh, so you just, you just closed that in what, June, July, June? Uh, June 15th. Yeah. June 15th, right. Yeah. We just, we just announced and closed the, uh, the series B. Um, yeah. End of June. So Qu- quick last questions here. We're out of time. What's the team size today? Uh, we are 52 employees. Everybody in New York. Uh, it's our only office. We do have, we do have some people in regions. So we've got some folks in, in the Bay area. We've got some folks in LA, uh, Austin, um, Seattle and Toronto. And, uh, with the current money that you've raised, are you getting more aggressive or less aggressive on your payback period that you're comfortable with? Uh, we're actually going to get a little more aggressive. Yeah. So you'll let it go to 12 months, 18 months, maybe 24 if you need to. Yep. Yep. We're, yep. A little more aggressive. Yep. we're, we're entering that hyper growth mode right now. Makes sense, Brad. Let's wrap up with the famous five. Number one, what's your favorite business book? Oh, wow. Um, that's, uh, I gotta, I gotta think about that one. What's the next question? No, what's the last one you read? Do you, don't make one up. If you don't have one, that's okay. Yeah, let's go to the next question. All right. Number two, what's, is there a CEO you're following or studying right now? Um, so I'm, I'm a huge Elon Musk fan. No, you buy a flamethrower. I do not buy a flamethrower cause I don't need a flamethrower, but, um, I, I'm, I, uh, I admire everything he does, including the most recent mini submarine that he and his team have put together to, to help the kids in Thailand. I know they didn't use it, but still amazing. Number three, besides your own, what's your favorite online tool for building a business? My favorite online tool. Um, so I, I have a developer tendency, so I'll, 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 I'll say GitHub. GitHub. Are you a developer? Oh yeah. By nature. Sure. Oh, great. Good. Number four, how many hours of sleep are you getting every night? Uh, I get about four and a half, <laughs> four and a half. What's your situation? Married, single kids. Uh, I've got, I've got three kids. I'm, I'm happily married with three kids. Uh, oh geez. How do you, four and a half hours of sleep? How do you function? Yeah, it's, it's, um, there's, there's only one way to manufacture time. And that was to lose the, you know, that was, that was, that was on the sleep side. Right. So, uh, yeah, I kind of go to bed about 1230 and tend to wake up at about five. All right. And how old are you? I am uh, 43. Take us back 23 years. What do you wish your 20 year old self knew? Oh, wow. Um, yeah. So that was like the dawn of the internet era when I was, when I was doing it back then. Right. So, um, I didn't even know about venture capital back then, to be honest. Right. That was, that was sort of an an interesting anomaly. Um, what did I, what did I know? Um, what do you wish you knew? I I wish I knew, I wish I had thought about SaaS earlier on. We struggled as a, you know, an on-prem company for so long and it pains. I, I wish I had thought about doing SaaS earlier, you know? Um, that would have changed the game. It, it certainly did when Salesforce first started with it. I wish we had rolled out SaaS, you know, much earlier, right? In the, in the, in the late nineties, early, early two thousands. Guys, there you have it from Brad. Founded his current company in 2015 with partners that uh, had a lot of success in their first company in Sicily, selling to Salesforce for north of 50 million bucks. Stayed there for a couple years. Then had some time at airtime and then jumped back into where his heart is, B2B SaaS, uh, launching customer with a K. Again, making customer interactions way easier with way more kind of data integrated so that the processing of feedback or free funds, changes in sizes, things like that are much easier. Uh, They've got 40% quarterly revenue expansion, 52 people based in New York City. $38 million raised, uh, growing at a very healthy clip. Average customer paying about 100 bucks per month, uh, you know, call it just south of between 1,000 and 10,000 logos per month, but impact much greater in terms of large seat sizes for each of those logos. Brad, thank you so much for taking us to the top. Thank you. Take care.